Now, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you heard this word innovation. It's trending. A lot of people are talking about innovation. But the thing is, a lot of people are intimidated by the word innovation. I've met a lot of people who say, I want to innovate. I'm like, okay, so what are you waiting for? Um, no, I wanna, I, I'm waiting to do something that has, has been never done before. Uh, but I'm sure you guys heard the saying, everything has been under the sun, right? There is nothing. You, innovation is not about reinventing the wheel. Innovation is about taking something that exists, adding a little things to it, and making it different. You think Uber was innovation? Uber is not innovation. There is a taxi system. You call, you order a cab, and it comes to you. Uber just did the same thing differently. All these Airbnb hotels exist. You book, you call, and everything. The thing is, these people took what exists, added a couple of things to it, tweaked it a little bit, and they became innovative people. So don't let the word innovation like, get to you. It's not that hard. It means take something, knock it off, do it better, do it in a different way, and make it happen. But the thing is, innovation is not just a good idea, that's it, or a great idea. Innovation is an ecosystem. There's a lot you have to do to be innovative, not just come up with like a crazy, insane business idea or a crazy, insane idea that will change or solve problems. That's not it. It's literally an ecosystem. So let me just, I'm going to break it down to you in different ways when it comes to business, how to become innovative and how to shape the future. So coming up with something creative but not following up and making a structure that is innovative for it makes it literally a Ferrari engine on a Honda Civic body. You know what I mean? So it's kind of useless. So think of it as an ecosystem. Let's start by the first thing, product innovation. For example, people think that once they create a product and it sells and it makes money, they're good to go. Nope. Innovation is research. Innovation is reinventing the product, adding things to it, making it different, and changing it up every now and then so you can maintain that level of innovation. Innovation is not creating something and sleeping on it. Number two, cost innovation. Cost. Dropping cost to make more revenue and more money is essential for every business. It's very important, but it doesn't mean to drop your cost to the, to the extent that your quality drops. Imagine, for example, Boeing decided to cut their cost so they can make more money and their quality drops. Our lives will be at, safe, uh, at jeopardy. We won't be safe. So finding ways to cut costs to make more money is good. It's amazing. It's innovative to say, okay, I'm going to do it this way because it saves me, let's say, 30 cents on each product, but throughout the year it saves me $3 million. That's amazing. But don't, don't give away your quality for that. So that's important. Second thing is pricing innovation. Pricing is an art. A little bit too much might kill it, a little bit too little might not. There was actually a big restaurant that shut down in Dubai because they were five dirhams short under the price. So if they were five dirhams more on each item on the menu, they would have broken even and been good. But they were this much, this amount short on their prices. So pricing is an art, how to price things, how to create um, a dynamic um, demand and supply environment with your customers is very important. So this is also another source of innovation when I say an ecosystem. The next thing is marketing. Marketing is very important. So innovating in marketing is basically using all the channels available for you to market, social media, offline, online media, dig uh, digital, non-digital, old school, new, every type of media you can, just to leverage your business to take it to the next level. Creating campaigns that are meaningful, impacting people with what you do through marketing, and being very smart with it. And looking at your competitors, but not living in their shadows, because if you copy your competitor, people are smart nowadays, they can see it. So look at your competitors from like a window that is very sophisticated, very smart, very sharp, don't copy because to be honest, this world needs innovators, not imitators. So let's not imitate, let's innovate. So that's very important. So marketing is also a big thing. The next thing I wanna talk about is culture innovation, which is a lot of organizations are embarking on nowadays, the, especially the biggest ones, which is creating a creative culture. I'll explain to you what it means. So basically, in organizations, what managers do is manage aggressively, um, micromanage, um, supervise staff, um, 
like even block processes just to make sure everything is happening. The new way of, of innovating in, in an organizational culture, even when you start a business, you want to start from the beginning introducing a self-learning culture, introducing a self-motivating culture, introducing this leadership culture from the beginning in your organization. Managers should get busy inspiring their employees um, connecting them to people, introducing new ideas, innovating with them, teaching them new things, but not micromanaging them, creating rules and making it more aggressive. To me, I believe that you can be aggressive as a leader with your goals, but not with the people that are taking you towards your goals, because that doesn't work. Back then, Leadership wasn't that big, management was, because people did not know any better. But now with the new era, with the new mentality of people and, and how things are with social media, people know their value. And they want that freedom environment when they work. And that's the new thing. So culture innovation is so important. When your employees are happy, they give more, they produce more, they do more, they're so loyal to you to, to, a, to an unbelievable extent. And I actually have a story that I'll share with you. And that story really made me believe in leadership. So in 2013, I was bankrupt, so I had no money. And I had to face my staff and tell them, hey guys, I don't have any money, I can't pay your salaries, but it will take me time to build all of this again. 20% of my staff left. 